My talk will be about indirect ophthalmoscopy. In indirect ophthalmoscopy, rays coming from the ophthalmoscope into the patient's eye. Back from the patient's eye, this plus lens will condense rays to form an image here, an inverted image in the space between the lens and the doctor. And the doctor has to accommodate to see this image. So uh, this part of the fundus will form an image here. Rays coming from this part through the lenses of the eye rays will come parallel being an emetropic eye through this lens parallel rays passing through this lens will form an image here at the focal point of the lens again rays from this part of the retina will come out parallel to form an image here same here this part of the retina rays coming parallel to form an image here and at the end we have this image of the this part of the retina and the observer needs to accommodate to form this image formed at the focal point or the focal length of this lens so we have an inverted image in the space here and the observer the doctor accommodates to see it so this is the principle we're going to use high convex lens to receive rays coming from the fundus rays coming parallel then they form an image at the focal point of this lens and the doctor needs to accommodate to see this inverted image so this part of the retina rays coming out parallel rays and this plus lens will focus it in the focal point of this lens forming an image if we these rays are parallel if we take another ray parallel also passing through the anterior focal point of the patient and also another parallel ray passing through the principal nodal point of this lens all these rays are parallel so we have two triangles this one and this one here you get the part of the retina examined this is the object and here you have the image all these rays are parallel so these two triangles are related to one another if this lens is plus 20 then this distance should be 5 centimeters we know that the nodal point of the eye is about 17 millimeters in, in front of the retina then we can calculate the magnification the size of the image divided by the size of the object equals 50 millimeters divided by 17 millimeters if we are using 20 but if you use say 30 diopters then the focal lens should be shorter if you are using the old 13 diopter lens then the focal length will be longer and the magnification will differ. in case of 13 the magnification is 5 times in case of plus 20 magnification is 3 in case of two, plus 28 diopter lens examination lens the magnification is only 2 as you can see here the magnific as we pass in this direction the magnification is getting less and less but at the same time the field seen in the retina getting larger and larger and larger now I want to 
discuss another point which is the effect of distance between the lens we are using and the patient we can hold the lens in such a way that the f of the lens is coinciding with the anterior focal of the point of the patient or we can hold the lens away or closer to the patient now suppose we have emetropic eye and f of the lens is close it's inside it's between anterior focal point of the patient and the cornea being emetropic eye rays coming parallel but if it was a conver a myopic eye rays coming convergent and in case of hypermetropia rays comes divergent in case of myopia if f of the lens is inside the anterior focal point the image formed will be smaller than average and in case of hypermetropia rays coming divergent and if f of the lens is inside the anterior focal point distance then the image formed will be larger to understand this here an emetropic eye with all the rays parallel so here f of the lens is on the anterior focal point of the patient and this is the size of the image we take a line parallel to all these lines passing in the principal point of the lens and this is the angle same as all these angles and this is the size of the image now imagine that we hold the lens closer now the line passing in the anterior fo in the principal point of the lens is also the same angle being all rays are parallel so the angle here is the same as before and the size of the image is the same the, the image is a little bit closer but it's of the same original size and the same is true if we go the other way around if we hold the examining lens away still the ray passing in the nodal point of the lens get the same angle with the principal axis as before and the size of the image will be the same so in case of emetropia the size of the image is the same regardless we get closer or away from the examining eye now in case of myopia this is the original situation when the anterior focal point and the f of the lens are coinciding and this is the size if we get the examining lens closer then we are going to have a line here parallel to this red line these rays are convergent so the red line is more convergent and the angle formed here is smaller so this same line will form a smaller angle and the size of the image should be smaller if the other way around we get the examining lens away so this angle is larger because these rays are convergent so having a wider or larger angle than a parallel ray here will form a wider or a larger angle so the image will be larger so in case of myopia if you get the lens closer to the eye the image will be smaller and if it's away from the eye the image will be larger in case of hypermetropia 
rays coming from the eye are, are divergent. In the original situation, when f of the lens is the same on the same location as antifocal point of the patient, this is the average normal sized image. If we get the lens closer, now the angle formed here between this red line and the principal axis is larger than before. So if we draw a parallel line here and f of the and the nodal point of the lens, then the image will be larger. The, the reverse is true. If we draw the lens away from the patient, now f of the lens is here with this green line and the angle here is smaller because the whole bundle is divergent. So if we draw a parallel line to form the image, we are expecting that the image in this situation will be smaller. So in case of hypermetropia, as we go away, the image gets smaller. So in emetropia, it makes no difference, the moving closer or away, the same size of the image is there. But in myopia or hypermetropia, the size of the image form varies depending on the position of the lens and the examined eye. So, magnification or the size of the image depends on the relative position of the lens in relation to the anterior focal point of the patient and also depends on the patient's the state of refraction. In the normal eye, the distance is 17 millimeters between the retina and the nodal point. But in cases of axial hypermetropia, it is larger. And in cases of axial, in cases of axial myopia, it is longer. And in cases of axial hypermetropia, it is smaller. This will affect the magnification. And lastly, the lens used, the focal length varies with the lens power and also this will affect magnification. The second point I want to discuss is the binocular ophthalmoscope. As we said before we have an inverted image in the space here between the doctor and the lens used. In order to see this image with both eyes we have this group of prisms that rays are shifted with 90 degrees to this prism, this another 90 degrees into this eye and the same is here. So instead of having a short distance between the two, the whole object here is 15 millimeters, we increase it to 60 or 65 or 70 millimeters depending on the IPD of the doctor. This is the idea. We have some prism here to send an image to this eye and send another image to the second eye. So rays coming from the object are changed to reach different the both eyes with wider interpupillary distance. 